Case number one is an example of osteosarcoma. So let me start by showing you um, a radiograph. So here is a nice classic example of osteosarcoma. They have a wide range actually of um, radiologic features and microscopic features. So I'm just going to show you a couple classic um, images here. And also keep in mind that, of course, I am not a radiologist, so what I'm saying here is my best understanding, but I'm not an expert at this. This is a good example, though, of the mix kind of uh, lytic and sclerotic. The lytic are the, the lighter, I'm sorry, the, the blacker areas, and the sclerotic areas where the bone is thicker is the, the more uh, dense white areas. So there's a mixture of lytic and sclerotic components here at the end of a long bone. And you can see that the tumor has grown out of the cortex and into the soft tissue. And it's beginning to make these hazy areas of white uh, opaque substance. And those correspond to new bone formation, mineralization of osteoid that's being created by the tumor as it invades the soft tissue. And that's very characteristic of an osteosarcoma. And the other thing is look what happens to the adjacent bone. The periosteum here has begun to lift up and elevate off of the surface of where the normal bone should be. So that periosteal reaction and periosteal elevation is a characteristic feature of osteosarcoma. And in some cases like this one, you get to see this feature, which is called Codman's triangle that everyone likes to learn about in med school, that the, the lifting of the periosteum and elevation off of the surface of the cortex gives you this kind of triangular uh, shape. So that's characteristic of uh, osteosarcoma. Now let's look at the pathology. Here's a, a core, and you can see that this lesion is composed of very atypical hyperchromatic pleomorphic spindle cells. And these cells are intimately associated with these little strands of dense pink collagen. Now this is osteoid, and it can be hard sometimes to tell apart, well, what's just collagen and what's osteoid? Because remember, osteoid is collagen. It's collagen type 1. So the best evidence, I think, is when you can see these little strands of pink stuff become mineralized and pick up calcium and uh, start to turn into calcium hydroxyapatite. Let me show you another area where you can see that going on you can begin to see here this purple stuff. This is calcium. So as the uh, tumor cells are making the pink collagen and these little strands of collagen eventually become purple and um, pick up calcium, that's good evidence that what you're dealing with is truly osteoid. And a malignant neoplasm that produces um, osteoid is kind of the hallmark feature, basically, of what defines osteosarcoma. So there are different varieties and patterns. Uh, areas like this look kind of like the osteoblastic pattern, where you have cells that kind of resemble osteoblasts but are much more atypical, and they're laying down these woven little strips of osteoid. Um, that's an osteoblastic type pattern if you just had that. But in this one, we actually have other areas that look a little different. These areas actually look a lot like cartilage, atypical cartilage. So if you have a lot of this, we call it a chondroblastic osteosarcoma. And in, um, uh, as you probably remember, osteosarcomas are most common in young people, in, uh, in uh, patients that are between 10 and 20 years of age, but it can occur in pretty much any age range. And there's a second peak um, in older adults as well. But the most common is in 10 to 20 year old, and it's usually in the metaphysis of long bones. Um, about half of the cases occur near the knee. Okay, and so these, um, when you see uh, atypical cartilage in a young patient, I always want to think of chondroblastic osteosarcoma before I think of chondrosarcoma because young people don't usually get chondrosarcoma. That's a disease usually of older adults, uh, whereas osteosarcoma is more common in younger adults. Okay, so this is an example of the atypical chondroid areas you can have in chondroblastic osteosarcoma, and we've seen the osteoid production by the tumor. Um, as far as genetics go, there's a lot of complexity, but two genes to always keep in mind for osteosarcoma is the retinoblastoma gene, RB, and also the P53 gene. So patients that have germline retinoblastoma abnormalities have a higher risk of getting uh, osteosarcoma, and also patients with leaf rameni syndrome where they have uh, germline P53 abnormalities, those are linked to osteosarcoma, but there's a variety of other genetics that's much more complex um, and outside the scope of this uh, review. So osteosarcoma.